Yes, I love technology, but not as much as you, you see. But I still love technology, always and forever. This is a PI Advice Podcast. Yeah, boy! What's going on, everybody? This is Andrew with the Pride of Us Good Advice Podcast. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, you know, I've been, dude, super under the weather lately. Like, I didn't know if I was going to have a voice. Like, I've been going on for like a week, and I was like, oh, man, I hope this clears up. And it's just starting to clear up. And I think I might have actually been getting sick on the last podcast. Uh, but anyways, uh, thanks for tuning in. I'm glad you guys could be here. Uh, so today, uh, today I don't have a rant. Today I just have some like kind of cool news for you, going over some stuff that's happening in the uh, in the tech industry that uh, I thought was kind of cool to kind of keep your eye on, you know, in the future for uh, some of the stuff that uh, that can come out eventually. Um, yeah, it's uh, uh, gosh, I, I think I had something to tell you guys, and I can't even remember now. Uh, you know, actually, I've actually been kind of kicking around the idea before we get into all this new stuff um, of doing, doing the podcast live again. I, 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 I mess with it using Ustream. I'm thinking about trying to do it um, without doing, maybe, maybe not doing the video live. Um, at least not yet. Um, but maybe just doing the audio live. Um, so I, I, I don't know. I'm thinking about it. If this is something you guys are interested in, let me know. The only thing about this is, I probably couldn't guarantee you a steady date. Like it wouldn't be like every Monday night at 6 p.m. or something. I can't promise that. I, I don't know whether it'd be working a case or, you know, putting the kids to bed or whatever, you know, whatever. I, I, it's, uh, you know, you know, you know how it is, man. Life, you know, just gets in the way sometimes. Just, you know, um, so anyways, just, just throwing it out there. If you guys have some feedback on that, let me know. If not, that's cool too. So one of the first things I found on the interwebs is uh, is this thing called this auto traffic light recognition, which Audi is apparently messing with right now. And basically, the car will give you um, like a countdown. Uh, let's say you're at a red light. It'll uh, sync up with uh, the city's central traffic computer, whatever city you're in. And um, it'll start counting it down. So if you're at a red light, you'll know, like, oh, I got 10 seconds and this bad boy's going to turn green. Uh, so well, what is that going to matter, right? You're thinking to yourself, uh, well, it's going to turn green when it's going to turn green, right? Well, if you're texting, it'll get you off your texter so you can look up and pay attention. Um, it'll, you know, probably just make you pay more attention in general. Like, you, you just, you know, you're not you know, daydreaming, you'll have a counter right there going, nah, come on, dude, who knows? Maybe it'll install a buzzer to let you know, like, Hey, knock it off. People are waiting for you. Get going. Right. Yeah, maybe. Um, it'll also potentially kind of give you a heads up when, um, you know, a traffic light might be turning red ahead of you. So it would, which would actually give you more time to stop. Cause you ever been driving down the road and like, you're like, next thing you know, it's a yellow and next thing you know, it's a red, you're like, Oh crap. And you try to make it through the, the, the light there as I'm smacking everything in my office studio here. Um, if you know this is coming, if you have some kind of anticipation that a light's going to start turning, you know, colors, uh, you might react differently. Um, so anyway, so they, they think it might make actually traffic go better if people kind of are more aware of what's going to happen and, uh, and, and, you know, have something to alert them. So I thought this, well, how would this fit as a, you know, for an investigator, at least a, at least a surveillance investigator, right? Well, um, have you ever, like, gone through an intersection, your, your, your subject or your claimant goes through an intersection and you get, I mean, there's just no way because they already made it through the yellow and you're pushing your luck going through the red. Either you're going to get a ticket or you're going to get smacked by some other car, right? So, um, you know, maybe if you're in an ideal situation, maybe you're in the right lane. And, and, and this timer clicks on, he goes a minute and a half. You have to wait at this light, right? And you're like thinking to yourself, there's no way I'm a, I'm gonna lose this guy. 
or my person I'm following, if I wait here a minute and a half, it's just there's 20 other stoplights ahead of me, and they're going to make all the greens because that's how it always goes. Uh, you know, maybe you can make some different decisions, you know, on your surveillance. Uh, safe ones, of course. I don't want to give any bad advice here. Uh, maybe you decide to drive through a grocery store parking lot and whoop around and make it to another turn and turn right, and then, boom, you're on your way following, every, you know, your claimant or your subject. Um so, you know, it can kind of give you a heads up because you sometimes you have these lights and maybe they're quick. You're like, hey, you know what? I'll just stay right here. It's easier for me to sit right here for the next 10, 15 seconds because these lights are going quick and I can keep an eye on my subject versus you doing something else to to try to make uh, things happen. So I, I don't know. I think this this could be a big thing. Um, you know, it also, you know, if you're really slick as an investigator, it might be like um, – if you know stoplights are going to come ahead and, and your subject's in front of you, then you don't maybe have to be as close to them. Or, um, you know, because there's like a general rule, like when you're in the, um, you know, when you start hitting stoplights, like you, you really kind of want to shrink the distance. If, you're, if there is a distance between you and your subject, you want to shrink it up a little bit because, again, it only takes one car, one light, you know, boom, you're done. And the game's over. And then, you know, your boss is like, what are you doing out there? And I'm just like, dude, I'm just trying to follow them, you know. Anyways, so I'm I'm excited about that. So for, you know, I'm gonna post to give me a couple of days. I'll have this, you know, all these uh, uh, links to these articles about this in a little more detail than me. But give me a couple of days. I'll post it in there. Um, they apparently they're already testing the technology, and I think you know, in a bunch of different cities in the United States. One of them being uh, Vegas. So yeah, very, 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 very cool. I thought that was exciting. Very practical technology for the investigator. Um, anyways. Uh, so, uh, another article that came out, which basically said the the phone metadata, uh, phone metadata gives away secrets. Now, uh, they, they, they wrote on this, apparently there's these two guys over in Stanford that have been doing like testing with, uh, metadata and, uh, basically I, I think it has a lot to do with the, the NSA stuff and I don't, I don't follow it as much as I should to be honest with you. Um, but I mean, cause I don't know, that's, that's a whole nother story. But, um, anyways, this guy named Jonathan Mayer and Patrick Mulcher, um, did, did, they did a test in the past, which I'll probably write about down the road here, but they did a new test with cell phones and apparently they got, uh, 546 volunteers and, um, and they used a special app to pull their metadata from their phones, which is, I don't know. It could be GPS location. It could be, um, you know, wh whatever data that phone provides. Uh, uh, this in particular, they wanted to um, track phone calls. And so they tracked the phone calls. And what their, what their contention is, is that this metadata paints a picture about someone's activities. And now I, I, I know there's st stuff out there that, that investigators use to, well, I, I don't even know all the, I, I, I haven't read about it in a while, but, um, can pull, um, well, even, even computers can, can pull like a, a snapshot of information on the computer without changing any of the data on there. Just pull a snapshot of all the data that's on there. And, and then, you know, guys that are forensic guys can go in there and see what's been happening on a computer. I'm assuming the same things are happening with cell phones whether it be, you know, phone calls, call logs, things like that. Um, so I'm not that well versed in metadata in, in that regards, but I, I'm assuming this is what's happening. So, you know, th they're, they're making it sound like it's something new. I think it's probably been going on for a very long time. Uh, you know, there's some investigators out there doing that stuff. So anyways, they, uh, they, 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 they say, look, this, this information can paint a picture and, and they give, you know, some anecdotes, some basic examples of some of the, the things that, uh, that happened from these volunteers. And, and basically they said, well, one person, um, called their sister. Right. And then, uh, the next day they called Planned Parenthood a bunch of times. And then a couple of weeks went by and then they called Planned Parenthood again, a couple of times. And then a month went by and they called Planned, Planned Parenthood again. And that, that one small example can kind of get, can kind of paint the picture of what was going on in that person's life at that moment, what was going on. Um, and I think, uh, you know, that, that's just a, you know, a microcosm of something that something happened in someone's life. Now, yeah, you could say, well, you know, maybe they were anti, you know, 
Planned Parenthood and they were calling to harass. You know, yeah, that could have been the case. That could have been. Uh, but, you know, anybody that, you know, is intelligent could probably gather that this person probably had to make a life choice. And um, and that's, you know, what they did. And this is just one example that they give. They give a bunch of different examples of things. Uh, this one would just seem to be the, the clearest to me of, of how it kind of paints a picture of what's going on with somebody. And, and so, anyways, the... You know, you could build profiles of people or, or get an idea of what's going on in their life with this this metadata stuff. And I guess the NSA has been, been doing this and saying they're they're not or claiming that they can't put together this kind of information. But these two guys from Stanford are kind of saying, look, this is the kind of stuff you get. But in reality, guys, private investigators have already been doing this, not with necessarily with all with metadata on phones, but just in general. I mean, people, you know. When you when they come out of their home and you're watching them, you start to build a profile in your head of what that person's like, um, you know. And when they go to the doctor, and they, you know, and then they uh, they they go in there with the the crutches or the cane, and when they leave the doctor, they toss the they toss the stuff. You automatically, you know, probably go, "Hey, that guy's a you know, that guy's a piece of work. He's probably a big turd, right?" I mean, that's you can't help yourself. Now you think this guy's a shyster. Uh, and so they've painted a picture for you of maybe the kind of person that they are, um, or, you know, they, uh, whatever they, you know, they're the family man. They, they take their kids to school and they, you know, they volunteer in the PTA and you see them do all this stuff. So now you've kind of paid a picture of, well, you know, if I ever lose this guy, maybe I need to go find some kind of, you know, maybe he's involved in the, you know, little league for their kids or something. So. Um, anyways, it, all these little things add up, you know, uh, helps an investigator do their job. Um, you know, I, someone's in the fashion, they're always dressed up super nice. Well, then they might like to shop a lot. You know, you kind of, you just can't help yourself. And these are assumptions, but this is what we have to do sometimes when we, you know, I used to lose people all the time and I would take any type of knowledge that I had about the person or the direction they were going. And, uh, I try to piece together the a hobnob of information to find them again. Uh, and sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't, but when it worked, I looked brilliant, you know? So anyways, uh, let's see here. What else we got? That was, uh, that article is from Gizmodo. Um, and so one of the last cool things, um, you know, uh, you know, we do, we store our data on different things. I like to, uh, let me see here. I store, I store my, uh, I store a lot of data on external hard drives. Uh, this one's a Toshiba. I've had this one since uh, well, since I started my business. It was 500 uh, gigabytes. This was like, uh, I don't know, it was like 100 bucks, like, you know, three years ago. It was expensive. And now they've come down dramatically, by the way. Um, and, you, I mean, you gosh, you could probably get a terabyte now. I, I think it was for for like 100 bucks. Anyways, an incredible amount of space. You can store things on there. Um, and so, but there's also cloud data and there's a big demand for that. You know, you've got Dropbox and, uh, I think there's one that's just called box and then there's something called sugar sink. And then Apple has a, a cloud storage. Microsoft has one drive cloud storage, apparently. Anyways, um, did I mention Dropbox? I think I did. Anyway, so Google, Google drive is, is like that. They've got, um, uh, you know, cloud storage to do they actually, if you haven't tried Google drive, you should really try it. It's really cool. You can, uh, you can open up a document, share that document with other people. And literally it's like a live document. Like, uh, I, my brother and I could be writing on the document at the same exact time, making edits to it. And we're seeing it happen in real time. I'm very, and as soon as you finish writing something, you don't have to save it. It's automatically saved. It's just anything you're doing on there is live. It's saved. Uh, it's very cool. Very cool. And, and that's just what I used it for. But it, they use it for other things. They use it for, they have Google Docs in there that I, I don't mess with. But, you know, there's different things. There's spreadsheets and all kinds of good stuff. Anyway, so wh what am I getting to, right? What, what, why do I care about this, Andrew? Well, because uh, Google, um, they, uh, they change their prices. And they literally are going to drive down prices. You, they're not going to be able to stop them because they... Uh, because right now you get 15 gigabytes for free. And apparently if you, I don't know, I'm pretty sure if you look at your Gmail. Yep. So if you look at your Gmail, I look down at the bottom of, of, of uh, like open up something, look down there. You see in the bottom left-hand corner, it'll say a certain amount of gigabytes of 15 gigabytes are used. So 
your Gmail, if you use Gmail to, to run your email, um, is uh, is in this Google Drive. It's in this cloud storage. So your your email contributes to what's in the storage. The things you save in there are contributed into it. Um, if you put pictures in there, um, so you know it has uh, all, a bunch of different uses more than I can even use. So that's Google Drive. Fifteen gigabytes is free, right? So. Uh, what they ended up doing is dropping down their price, and I can't remember what it was originally. It was I can't I can't even find it now. Uh, anyways, they're charging a dollar ninety nine for a hundred gigabytes, which is really great. But the main thing that they dropped was the one terabyte. Now I just told you I spent, you know, ninety bucks for that external hard drive. Now if it fails, if my data is on there and it fails, I'm kind of screwed because that's. That's where the data ends, right? That's where all my my family pictures are and any other important information that I want to keep on there. Now, they have a terabyte for $9.99 a month. It looks like, is that right? Did I write that? Yeah, $9.99 a month. So about $100 for the year. Now it, the competitors, right? So you, look, I mentioned Dropbox, Sugar Sync, which I've, I don't know if anybody else heard of that because I've never heard of that, but in this article it mentions it. Uh, so you got so Dropbox, Sugar Sync, Apple, Microsoft, you, and you got a bunch of other players. I'm sure um, they all have their own prices. But to give you some comparison on how drastic of a drop this is, so for a terabyte of you know being able to save information, not everybody's going to need a terabyte. Uh, most people might not even. Need the uh, what is it? The God, get on the right page here. Yeah, the uh, the the hundred the hundred gigabytes might be enough for somebody at at two dollars a you know two dollars a month, which is what twenty four dollars a year. Incredible price. Um, yeah. So, anyways, where am I going with this? I don't even know. I'm lost. I'm getting all fuddy duddy about this this price here. So Dropbox. Okay. So Dropbox offers a hundred gigabytes for ninety nine ninety nine a month. Versus nine ninety nine a month for Google's one terabyte, big difference. I don't know what Dropbox is going to do if if people decide to switch over. SugarSync, whoever they are, offers one terabyte, which is what uh, what Google's offering for for nine ninety nine. They offered at fifty five dollars a month. Apple offers fifty uh, fifty gigabytes at a hundred dollars a year, which was kind of comparable to the. Um, the uh, 100 gigabyte version of Google's, but the, even then they still undercut them and offer more. Um, and then Microsoft's OneDrive, uh, 50 gigabytes for $25 a year. Um, and then again, you know, it, what's it's $24 a year for Google when you get 100 gigabytes. So they've undercut them there. Uh, basically, Google's trying to make a play for uh, for uh, cloud storage. And uh, if they undercut these people, it's gonna it's gonna hurt a lot of businesses. And th- when you know when companies do things like this, we saw this uh, we saw this happen with uh, TLO and uh, IRB, right? TLO dropped their prices because they could at the time, right? And it literally drove any of the small competitors out. And I can't, I mean, I don't even remember the ones that did fall out. I can barely remember them. And I think the ones that didn't fall out, they got bought out. Um, and so it really kind of left only two competitors, which, I mean, I think there's some more out there still, but I don't, I don't know anybody who's using them. Um, it's IRB and it's TLO. And so, uh, you know, IRB was able to withstand it and, uh, you know, the, the price drop people stuck with them. I stuck with IRB. Uh, you know, I had, I had no reason to really switch other than probably could have saved a few bucks. Uh, but you know, and then, yeah, I think TLO ended up raising their prices after all, even though I don't, I don't, again, I don't have it, but I think that's what I heard. So now they're back, probably back up to what IRB is actually charging. So, you know, basically this might be Google's way of getting them out of the way. Not that you probably care about that, but if uh, if you're interested in, in uh, you know, maybe you've got a bajillion pictures you want to save. I know my brother, like he's got a million pictures and he just, I think he just upload them, uploads them up to Google Drive and uh and then they charge him whatever it is he, uh, maybe two bucks a month or whatever he's getting charged and that way he doesn't have to worry about it you know and, and i think that even those servers are you know backed up so if one server was to fail with his pictures on it you know another server would have it so um that's one i think that's one of the good ways to uh good reasons to have it on, on a, in a in a cloud storage 
So, yeah, that's the tech news for you PIs. Yeah. You know, like I said, didn't even know if I was going to make it on. So really glad I did. Um, and, you know, I actually spent probably about 30 minutes catching up on emails. And um, for those of you, I, I got like a couple emails saying, like, wow, I, you know, I started digging into them. I'm like, oh, gosh, didn't answer this guy. I'm so sorry. And I answered this guy, but I answered him on the podcast. And so I better let him know to go check the podcast out. Anyways, you guys, I really appreciate the uh, – the uh you know the emails and the questions you know I, to, I you know i i do my best to to give you the best answer um you know the most responsible answer uh, i actually got an email for some kid going hey i yeah he's like 10 or 11 he's like i want to be a private investigator uh you know i you know help me how do i get to be one what do i got to do someone says i need to be a cop and somebody says i need to you know, go to college and you know, uh, help me. I, I don't know. Ten years old. He's got some time. He's probably not going to even be a want to be a private investigator in in uh, in ten years. Well, you know, after at least he listens to all my stuff, I'll probably talk him out of it. But um, it's just you know, it, this industry is tough, and and uh, a lot of the questions that I get are you know life decisions, and it's um, I, I'm going to have to put out some work. I mean, I just can't get to it fast enough. It's like I, the ideas come to me faster than I can put it on paper and make it sound intelligent. You know, to make it sound like, oh, I don't know. Good times. Anyways, you guys. Well, I hope things are going good for you. I always say that, and I really mean it. Um, you know, if you're considering being a prime investigator, um, I'll do what I can to talk you out of it. And if you really want it, then you got to want it. You got to be passionate about it. And, uh, you know, one of these the guys, I listen to a couple of people that always say the same thing over and over. He's like, you know. Yeah, the only way you're going to fail at becoming whatever it is, is when you quit. It's when you say, I'm I'm going to stop trying to be whatever it is. And, you know, the same thing goes for being a private investigator. You know, the, the people that are struggling to become one, your journey ends when you stop, when you quit, when you're not trying it anymore, when you're not trying to better yourself and you're not applying anymore, it's going to end unless some miracle happens. Someone just knocks on your door and says, Hey, do you want to be a private investigator? You know, you know, it's you got to hustle for it. This isn't uh, this isn't a job at just uh, some fast food restaurant where you know it's a you can just walk right in without any experience. I mean, uh, well, it is, but it's not that easy. There's not that many opportunities like that. So, anyways, I'll probably talk more about that, and I'm going to talk about business, writing business names, and I've got I still got this resume thing I want to write, and then I got this whole thing I talked about a couple weeks ago about talking to this uh, big recruiter guy for a company and, and what he had to say about who they hire. So a lot more to come. I just got to get it down on paper and on the mic. Okay. With that being said here, let me, uh, let me bust you out with some Napoleon. Yes, I love technology, but not as much as you, you see, but I still love technology. Always and forever. All right. I think I ranted for like four minutes. So, anyways, you guys. Really, 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 really. Thank you for your kind words. And uh, your emails. And, uh, you know, someday this site's going to be so huge, you're going to be like, I don't even need to talk to Andrew. It's on a site. Something's in there. I've got the answer in a video and a podcast and a blog. It's all there. It'll be huge. Anyways. All right, guys. Have a good morning. Tuesday morning. Tech Tuesday for March 18th, 2014. See ya. See ya.